capable, compact and indestructible. What not to like about the OM system tough series cameras. But what really sets them apart from other outdoor camera systems and one of the reasons why I got a TG7 recently are the available accessories. My name is Thomas Eisel. I'm a professional photographer from Vienna, Austria. In this expert guide, I will cover all my favorite accessories for OM system and Olympus Tough Series cameras and how to use them in practice so that you can make an educated buying decision. The Light Guide LG1 is basically a ring light diffuser for the built-in LED. Intended for ultra close-up work, it is best used for working distances ranging from 1 cm to 10 cm. Keep in mind that the color temperature of the built-in LED is 5080 Kelvin. This is especially important when filming ultra close-up videos with the LG1. When it comes to using the LG1 in practice, there are basically two scenarios to consider. Scenario number one, shooting ultra close-up video and scenario number two, shooting ultra close-up photographs. Let's start with scenario number one, shooting ultra close-up videos. For videography, you want the LED on your tough camera to be permanently illuminated. In order to get that, you just have to press and hold the info button on the back side of your tough camera for a few moments. And then the LED will turn on and permanently illuminate the scene. For photography, you most likely don't want the LED illuminator to be on all the time. So I recommend navigating to the camera's flash menu instead and enabling the option LED on. By doing so, the LED will only turn on during autofocus operation and when taking the photograph. The Flash Diffuser FD1 is a ring-shaped flash diffuser for the TG series camera's built-in flashes. It is depth-proof to a depth of up to 15 meters and is best used for working distances ranging from 2 to 30 centimeters. With two light volumes selectable on top of the accessory, you can make sure that you don't overexpose your subject in ultra close-up situations. Nonetheless, you have to keep in mind that the ring flash diffuser itself drastically reduces the flash output and the available guide number. So it is really meant for close-up work. In the live control menu, you will find the FD1 setting under the accessory menu. When you activate that, the camera will automate certain functions. So you don't really have to use the FD1 setting for the flash diffuser to work properly. I personally prefer leaving this option to off and controlling all the exposure parameters myself. A few notes regarding the illumination provided by the FD1 at working distances from 2 to 30 centimeters. Depending on the focal length and subject distance, slight vignetting is possible, especially when shooting at the wide end, so a focal length of 4.5 millimeters. In practice, this is a non-issue, but just if you notice that, that the corners are a bit darker, then just zoom in a bit, go back a few centimeters and take the shot again, and your subject will be perfectly lit by the FD1. Another interesting property of the FD1 I'd like to mention is that the diffusion window of this accessory is located in the top left corner. In practice, this means that the subject is illuminated just like me in this video. So it's a very natural lighting situation with the main light coming from the top left corner and the rest of the light being diffused a bit more. So even when you are using the FD1, in ultra close-up situations, it is possible that the photograph looks like it was taken with natural light only. And that is pretty awesome. Just because the ideal working distance for the FD1 is 2 cm to 30 cm, doesn't mean 
that you cannot use the accessory at longer distances for creative effects. What I did in previous shootings is that I cranked up the ISO to ISO 1600 and higher to compensate for the loss of light due to the FD1 diffuser and then I just took the shots of the model. This basically does two things. The flare in the lens reduces the contrast a bit, you can bring that up in post-production, but it also creates very interesting lens flares at certain distances. Let me show you how these photos turned out in practice. Two more things about the FD1 before we move on. Number one, you can utilize the FD1 as an improvised lens hood. Just make sure that you turn off the built-in flash, otherwise you're gonna get these reflections at regular working distances. And number two is about maintenance. The white reflective surface on the FD1 is actually paint. So if you wipe it excessively or if you bump it against a very sharp object, the paint can come off. This is not a major issue, but you just have to keep that in mind. One of the absolute must-have accessories for any tough series camera is the CLA T01 filter and accessory adapter. This neat little piece of plastic allows you to mount any 40.5 mm filter to your tough series camera. And additionally, it also allows the use of the fabulous conversion lenses available for the TG series cameras like this one the circular fisheye converter FCON T02. Let me demonstrate how to mount the CLA T01 to your TG7 or other tough series camera. First, we have to remove the lens ring. Do that by pressing the lock button in the bottom right corner of the camera body. Turn the ring counterclockwise until it stops and then you can remove it. In order to mount the CLA T01 to the camera, we just have to find the white alignment dot on the adapter and on the plastic bayonet of the TG camera itself. Just align those two, keep the locking button pressed, and then you can rotate the adapter in place. Check whether it's seated correctly, and that's it. When you mount just the adapter, you can actually use this adapter ring as a guide for your fingers to prevent the fingers from slipping over the lens accidentally. However, I do not recommend mounting a filter with the CLA T01 on the camera. Instead, I would always mount the filter and accessory with the CLA T01 detached and then mount the CLA T01 with the accessory on the camera afterwards. This reduces overall stress and as you can see the CLA T01 has a bit of play to provide better shock resistance so it can be a bit fiddly to mount the filter while the CLA T01 is attached to the tough camera. The original OM system filter adapter is made out of lightweight plastic. While it seems to be of low quality at first glance, this design is intentional and it ensures that if the CLA T01 or the mounted accessory take a bump, the adapter will break instead of the camera's bayonet. There are third-party adapters available which are made out of metal. Those pose a significant risk. I strongly advise against using these metal adapters. If the adapter or the mounted accessory take a strong enough hit, you will break your camera's bayonet and this means a costly repair. Like all compact digital cameras, the TG7 is a bit prone to lens flares. I've set up a strong light to the left of the camera to create these bubbly lens flares in the frame. But unlike other digital compact cameras, the TG7 has an optional lens hood. And you've guessed it already, it's the CLA T01, which can be used to greatly reduce lens flares. Let me demonstrate that.
So after mounting the CLA T01, the bubbly lens flares on the left hand side of the frame are practically gone. And the only thing you see is this bright spot and that's actually just the LED reflecting on the black background of the studio. So really the CLA T01 is a must have accessory for any TG series camera. When out in the field with my TG7, I usually have a UV filter on it. Why? Because of the protection aspect that a lens filter provides. Not because of the UV filtration aspect, which is not really needed for the TG7. When the weather is rainy or the conditions are dusty, it is just great to have peace of mind when grabbing a microfiber cloth and wiping the front element clean. Because I'm actually just scratching the filter if something goes wrong and not the lens cover of the TG7. When choosing a UV filter for your TG series camera, I recommend paying special attention to the protective coatings on the filter. I recommend looking for UV filters that offer waterproofing and oil resistance because then they are even easier to clean when out in the field. Let me demonstrate the advantages of protective coatings on UV filters. I've got a UV filter by KNF Concept mounted on my TG7 and I'm gonna spray it with water. As you can see, the water is forming little droplets. It's not spreading across the surface. And I can just take a simple microfiber cloth and wipe the filter clean. I can start shooting. That's a huge benefit when using UV filters with a protective coating. Another must-have filter type for the TG series cameras in my opinion is a circular polarizer. A circular polarizer cuts out light polarized in a certain direction and by doing so it can be used for a plethora of things in practice. For example, you can darken the sky, you can shoot through windows and minimize reflections, you can minimize reflections on bright surfaces in general with a polarizer. But most importantly, it is important to know that you cannot replicate the effect of a polarizer in post-production. So either you bring a polarizer and you are able to utilize its unique properties when out and about, or you just have to live with the results and cannot do anything about it later behind your computer. The last filter type I recommend getting for your Tough Series camera is a so-called diffusion filter. Diffusion filters are well known for lending digital photographs a more organic look by doing three things. They slightly reduce detail and they also reduce the overall contrast a bit. And the third thing that they do is they provide highlight halation. In my opinion, the TG series cameras are not overly digital looking because the lens sensor combination with the OM system image processing engine, they really provide very pleasing results. So that's not the reason why you should get a diffusion filter. But I would get the diffusion filter just for the highlight halation effect. So what does this do? If you've got very bright areas in the frame, neighboring to very dark areas, the bright areas actually bleed a bit into the dark areas, giving your image a subtle glow. This effect is very similar to what you get when working with analog film. But let's take a look at a few sample shots to see what this looks like in practice. Personally, I recommend getting a K&F black diffusion filter with a filter strength of 1 8th. 
Because of the small sensors in the TG series cameras, only a portion of the diffusion filter is used, which actually amplifies the diffusion effect compared to larger sensors. Using a stronger filter strength can really lead to very powerful halation in the frame, overpowering the other image elements. So really, my recommendation is getting a 1 8 filter strength first, trying it out, and only if you find the effect to be too subtle, then you should get a higher filter strength. The LBT-01 is a manually operated iris lens cover, which attaches to your Tough Series camera's bayonet mount. It can be operated by turning the outer ring, which opens and closes the iris. The LBT-01 is actually the smallest option to protect the front lens cover of your TG Series camera. Utilizing the CLA T01 with a lens cap instead will lead to a bit more width, although only a tiny bit more. In my opinion, the LBT-01 is perfect for carrying a Tough Series camera in a shirt pocket, because when the barrier is closed, it prevents dust from getting onto the front element. But when you bring it out, you just have to turn it and you're ready to shoot. That's also pretty neat for street photography. Keep in mind that as soon as you open the lens barrier, however, the front lens cover is no longer protected against dust and moisture. So when working in dusty or humid environments, it might be a better idea to utilize the CLA T01 with a UV filter instead, as I mentioned previously. If you own a TG7, you might want to get the RMW R1 remote trigger. It is basically a Bluetooth trigger for both video and photographic work. You can just pair it via the menu, it's very convenient and the connection is very stable and then you can remote control the TG7 with this little piece of plastic. I'd say that the RMW R1 is not an absolute necessity to have for your TG7 as you can remotely control the camera via the smartphone app anyway, but if you own an OM1 for example, you can utilize this trigger for both the OM1 and the TG7. So that's basically why I got it, because I really like having a wireless trigger for my OM1 and yeah, I can use it for the TG7 as well. The Tough TG7 is an almost indestructible outdoor camera, so why does it need a screen protector? Well, to achieve this high shockproof rating, the screen material on the back of the camera has to have a certain degree of flexibility, because as you know, it's either bend or break. Well, the TG7 screen bends a little, and this also means that it's a bit soft, so it can scratch in outdoor scenarios. So definitely get a screen protector. When it comes to screen protectors, you can choose between two materials. Material number one, a flexible plastic foil screen protector, and material number two, a more rigid glass screen protector. So while a glass screen protector sounds like the best choice for an outdoor camera at first glance, it actually isn't. Because although those are more expensive and offer better shock protection, they also have the nasty habit of cracking when exposed to mechanical stress. So the great thing about that is, of course, that this absorbs the shock better than a regular foil protector. But on the other hand, this property is not needed as the TG7's back screen is already shockproof. So you only have to protect it from scratches. And when you accidentally bump the TG7 in an outdoor scenario and you end up with those spider webs on the back screen of your camera, you can either remove the broken glass screen protector and work without the protector, which is of course suboptimal, or you can just leave it on and then you have to cope with this spider web. So actually don't get a gas screen protector. Instead, get something like this, a cheap but effective foil screen protector. 
It helps to prevent scratches on the camera, but it also won't break if the camera takes a hit. One of my favorite accessories, although not very exciting at the first glance, is actually the battery charger UC92. Why it is so awesome? Because of two reasons. First and foremost, it has a regular USB plug. So you can charge your camera batteries everywhere. You can plug this into your mobile phone charger, but you can also plug this into your power bank to charge the battery on the go. And that is great. I often toss the battery in there just with the power bank attached in my rucksack and there it charges while I'm working with the other battery. So I really, really like that. I can recommend that. And the second thing is that you can utilize the UC92 to store one battery on the go as a great way to save space in your camera bag. Here is how to do that. Just take your spare battery and insert it into the UC92 in the reverse direction. That's it. And you've got charger and a spare battery in a very small package. Another crucial accessory for any Tough Series camera, in my opinion, is a generic pouch. I've got this generic leather pouch, which is actually a pencil case. It is about the size of my hand and this is big enough to bring quite a few accessories with me every time I take out my TG7. Let me show you what's in there at the moment. In this pouch, I can comfortably fit my TG7 with the standard lens ring attached. Additionally, I've put my LG1 light guide in there for some macro video and just if I need it for ultra close-up photography. Additionally, there are lens filters in there with the CLA T01, of course, and what is always nice to have is a spare battery. So all of that and even more, there is still space in there, fits into this leather pouch. And what I really like about putting a camera in a pouch like this is that you can just take the pouch and toss it into any camera bag into any baggage you are carrying from rucksack to handbag whatever and this is really great because with this small pouch I've got my capable TG7 which can do everything from portrait to landscape to ultra macro to 4k video and it's just not weighing me down so really get the pouch I promise you you will bring your TG camera with you more often when you've got a fitting pouch for it. If you want to utilize the full potential of your Tough Series camera, you can get the OM System TG7 Expert Guide via the link down in the description. The Expert Guide not only includes information that cannot be found in the user manual or anywhere else, but also practical tips on how to configure the autofocus system, how to utilize the remote flash system and very in-depth technical information for all available accessories. Thank you very much for watching. Please consider subscribing and following me on other social media. See you next time.